Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, taking a look at some of the guns they're going to be selling in their September of 2016 premiere auction. And I had the opportunity today to take a look at another unusual item in the evolution of the Beretta automatic pistols. Now this is a model of 1931, and at this point we have almost gotten to the famous Beretta 1934 and 35, which would be they're really well done pistols, and they would be really the best pistols Beretta had made up to that point, and by far the most successful. So the Beretta 34 and 35, which are the same gun, just one's in 380 and one's in 32, they would serve the Italian armed forces through World War II, and then they would go into commercial production after the war for many years. They were very popular, extremely good pistols, and they are direct descendants of this, the model of 1931. In fact, there's really only one substantial difference, which is uh, visual and it's small enough that we'll take a closer look at that when we compare this to a later model pistol. A uh, little bit of the background on this, obviously it was developed in 1931. So Beretta had tried the 1922 and 23 pistols, which were larger frame guns. Uh, the 23 in particular was in 9 Glacenti. That had failed utterly to get any substantial military contracts, so, and, which is what Beretta really wanted to get. So what they did instead is they decided to shrink the thing down a bit, uh, go back to a smaller-ish frame, although bigger than their Pocket 25s, and see if they could come up with something that was a little bit better suited. Smaller, handier to carry, that sort of thing. What they came up with was this, the model of 1931. This is chambered for 32 ACP, has an 8-round magazine, which I believe is entirely interchangeable with the 32 Berettas going all the way back to 1917. And it carried over the exposed hammer from the model of 1923, and, uh, well, they threw this against the wall to see if it would stick. And this actually, they only made about 10,000 of these total. About a third of those went to the Royal Navy in Italy. Uh, but while that sounds like a small sales number, that's small because they quickly made one additional modification and then it became very popular. So why don't we go ahead and take a closer look and I'll show you what that one modification was. What we have here in the Beretta 1931 is a nice compact you can see that that fits very, very nicely in the hand. It's got a relatively short barrel. We have the exposed hammer from the previous Beretta models. We have a simple blowback action. A couple changes they made in addition to, obviously, the overall size uh, from the 1923 to this are they got rid of the fiber buffer uh, inside here because in 380 or 32 that simply wasn't necessary. Uh, they also changed the safety a bit. So on the earlier Berettas, you always had about a 90 degree safety throw. And on the 1931, they changed that to 180 degrees. So this is our fire position. That's our safe position. Uh, safe also doubles as a slide lock. So you can hold that open. And let me we have a heel release magazine as typical on all of the Berettas. And then disassembly is done simply by pulling the barrel out the back like that. And then I can release the slide. Very tight spring at this point. There we go. Slide comes off the front, recoil spring comes out, and there's the frame. Very simple disassembly there, really nothing to it at all. Um, I mentioned the buffer there in the 9 Glacenti version, the 1923. There's a fiber recoil buffer right in here, that's gone. And other than that, we have pretty much a standard small Beretta pistol. So a little bit of quick lineage here. The uh, model of 1931 is in 32 caliber, 32 ACP. They started the serial numbers at uh, 400,000. So this is 400,000. This is the approximately 4,000th version that they made. You can see the Beretta markings and the caliber over here on the other side. And from the patents here, you can see that this uh, is still based on the original 1915 patent. This is a 1915 with the modifications of 1919 and it is a model of 1931. So from here, the next step was the model of 1932. Now the 32 frame is the exact same as the 34 and 35, and so fortunately I keep a 1935 around for comparison just in case. And here it is, and you can see the difference is this extra palm swell on the back of the grip. That's the difference between the 31 and the 32, 34, and 35 that would come after it. They took a look at this, they got some feedback, and the feedback was, you know, it's not, not the greatest grip. The grip's actually a little bit small. If you could just widen it out a bit in the back, 
Um, actually kind of like the, uh, the late 1917 Savage pistols, where they, they widen out the base of the grip a little bit. And you know what, it really does make for a better grip on the gun. This is definitely more comfortable. So that is the one difference between the 31 and the 32. Now the slides are identical, um, and that will stay the same all the way up uh, for some time to come. So it's actually not unheard of to find uh, slides, 1934 pistols or 1932 pistols, that were actually 1931 slides where the one has been overstamped with a two or the four to make it the newer model. Because the slides were literally identical, they, they could easily do that, and they did, rather than build pistols on the now obsolete model. So, so this is the Model 31 in confusingly 32 caliber. Uh, the model of 1932 would extend this rear frame, but stay in 32 ACP. Then we had the model of 1934, where they upped the caliber to 380, which uh, is identified on the side as 9mm, because 380 is 9mm in diameter. Uh, those pistols would be wildly successful with over a million made during the war. And then they would also add the model of 1935, which goes back to 32 caliber, but with all of the features of the 34. So um, basically it's this gun in 32 with the widened rear grip. Now, because that pistol came out in 1935, it rendered this guy completely obsolete. Um, until then, there was still the only 32 in this frame. The, the others were uh, 30, 380 caliber. So production of this guy started in 31, ended in 1935. Suspect about 10,000 made. We don't have any really hard and fast numbers. A good chunk of them went to the Royal Navy, but uh, they were also sold commercially. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. The 1931 Beretta's, they don't show up all that often. Pretty cool to get to take a look at one, even when there are only subtle differences between two different uh, models of pistol. It's interesting to see them all laid out, show them side by side, so we can see what the design evolution actually was. So if you have a 34 and you'd like to add a predecessor to your own collection, or maybe you just want to start with this one, well, take a look at the description text below. You'll find Rock Island's catalog page linked there. You can see their pictures on this uh, pistol, their description, and place a bid for it online or uh, over the telephone or come up here to Rock Island to participate in the auction live. Thanks for watching. So the, the 34 and 35, which are the same gun, just in 32 ACP and 380, uh, would serve the Italian military through World War II and then be commer producially, producially commerced. Lots of producial commercial.